Counter-Strike 2 update will now check AMD drivers Antelec Plus Vagban, which has been reversed. AMD has released their RX 7900M high-end Navi 31 mobile GPU series. Nvidia might be planning their RTX 4000 Super Series starting with RTX 4070. And lastly, Intel Core i9 4900KF has broken a world record in overclocking. This is Tech Track. Alright, so firstly we have the release notes for the 10-19-2023 for the Counter-Strike 2 update. And as you can see, it says they added a startup check for incompatible AMD graphics drivers. We will now begin reversing VAG bans for affected players. So basically, as we already know the story, they were banning uh, the players because Antelec Plus was uh, considered as a cheating tool. <laughs> it's kind of it's kind of it's weird because, you know, VAG, it's a very interesting looking anti-cheat tool but anyway it was banning it and now they're reversing by adding this checker that checks the incompatible AMD graphics drivers which is the previous ones so the newer ones that AMD has launched or AMD has released recently is kind of is a fix for that and they're it's like a, it's like a quick fix I don't think it's a really a good fix like if you have a previous driver I don't think it will be good for you rather if you have a newer driver newer AMD drivers of course then I, I guess that would be the ones that they will checking because as it says incompatible AMD graphics drivers so I'm guessing the previous drivers won't be uh, checked rather or I would say the previous drivers are gonna cause the VAC ban but the latest drivers won't that would be my suggestion so that would be good otherwise I don't think it's a good solution I, I feel like this is a quick fix but then again you should have a you know the latest drivers so that is good next time we have an article from video cards here and they're basically saying the rx 7900m has been released by amd of course so they reported it so let's look into the specs here first for the rx 7900m the mobile series of the first one of course the rx 7900m probably the, the flagship mobile gpu coming from amd here and as you can see in the compute units we have 72 unified amd rdna3 compute units of course the rt accelerators remain the same 72 second generation air accelerators 144 game clocks will be 1825 and boosting at 2090 so not bad and of course g6 of 16 gigs of memory that's a good amount of vram and the interface is also good 256 bit bus so that's also nice 18 gbps memory speed also good enough 64 megabytes of second generation amd infinity cache and av1 of course they will be supporting it and we also have the tgp given up to 180 watts so it's gonna be not bad it's quite efficient in my opinion so not bad it's not really looking that bad we also have some extra information here as you can see amd radeon rx 7900m 16 gig gd6 well the tgp was 160 watts but it also says one thing that 200 watts with smart shift max so well obviously the feature smart shift if you enable it and at the max settings it will be taking up to 200 watts so still not so much to the point that you it's not you know that much inefficient or anything it's good enough in my opinion so yeah so basically we have the benchmark for it the first party benchmark from amd here and as you can see in well, we have restoration and ray tracing ray tracing is marked at yolo so you could already tell which one is ray trace and as you can already tell that ray traced games are not looking that good but either way let's start with the beginning cyberpunk 2077 non-ray tracing of course 38 percent gain that that's the maximum gain we can get from this so that's pretty good also it's coming with 16 gigs of vram so even though it doesn't really matter because it's 1440p and i guess 12 gigs is good enough already so 16 gigs is a bonus that's for sure maybe 4k maybe 4k will have some impact in borderlands 3 we're getting 29 percent dirt 5 27 percent far cry 6 23 percent and call of duty and hogwarts legacy is getting 21 percent and the rest of the games are also looking decent enough and well for spoken is, has literally no gain i wouldn't con consider that same goes for Sp spider-man miles morales without the ray tracing of course valhalla minus two so not a big deal but the ray trace titles the maximum lag we're getting is minus 15 percent or only 15 percent so not, still not only but it's quite a lot still and as you can already tell ray tracing well amd will struggle but restoration yeah cyberpunk 2077 just proves it it's pretty good very much good so on average we're looking at seven percent gain here so it's a winning but the pricing will crush you because for this variant as you can tell alienware m18 r1 well it's priced at 2000 eight hundred dollars so it's pricey it's pricey and well i guess we have to wait for other models to release for that so that you know you can 
really consider buying such a laptop. Otherwise, I don't think that's a good price. Next up, we have a very interesting leak. We might be seeing the first RTX 4000 series of uh, basically Super Series. So that's really interesting. So Zadwang has reported this and is basically coding is that there might be two new cards in the future. So not just one, two of them. Well, the main focus will be the Super variant because there's another variant that is RTX 4070 D6. That's the naming scheme that we're going for. That is kind of weird, but it says the same spec as RTX 4070, but shrinks to G6 memory. So basically G6 from G6X. So a downgrade. I would suggest, I would think that it will perform a bit lower, like in terms of performance, because, you know, it's using a much slower, or I wouldn't say much slower, but, you know, Nvidia likes to go for the G6X all the time. So G6 for RTX 4070 might slow it down. But we would have to see this one here, RTX 4070 Super, which will be based on 8103 and also will have a bandwidth of 256 bits. So in terms of bandwidth, they're not crippling it at least, just like they crippled the RTX 4060 Ti. So at least they're not crippling that. So that's pretty good. Also, it will have 16 gigs of VRAM. Yeah. So in terms of VRAM, you also have more VRAM, 4 gigs VRAM, because RTX 4070 has 12 gigs and RTX 4070 Super will have 16 gigs of VRAM. So in terms of VRAM, they're generous. And I, I believe RTX 4070 Super will remain G6X because that doesn't make sense to go with G6. D6 for the RTX 4070 D6 will go for G6. That's confirmed. But I'm guessing RTX 4070 Super, which doesn't say it will be G6X or G6. We don't know that, but I'm guessing it's, you know, it's a better version of the card. So should be 16 gigs of VRAM based on the G6X memory. So that would be nice. Hopefully it turns out good because... I'm guessing it won't, I mean, in terms of specs, it looks good. It doesn't look that much crippled. It's just like the RTX 4060 Ti. I always mention that because that card should have been performing just like the 3070, but it doesn't, surprisingly. So anyway, yeah, RTX 4070, um, my guess would be it will be performing in between like a RTX 40, um, I'm guessing a 4080, close to 4080. That would be my understanding. I'm not sure it would be performing just like the 4080. Shouldn't It shouldn't because it doesn't really make sense. But yeah, the, uh, it will always come down to the pricing, of course. So let's see. Let's wait and see. And lastly, we have a very interesting, huge news, of course. Because you know, remember when I said that in my previous video that RTX, or not RTX, Intel Core i9 4900K or any other series of 14th generation CPUs will have better overclocking capability. Well, it has been proven already because look at this one. This is the Intel Core i9 uh, 4900KF at 9043 megahertz, which is crazy. Of course, this is a liquid cool, uh, not liquid cool, uh, liquid nitrogen, I, I meant to say. But yeah, of course, it's like liquid nitrogen, but it went beyond 9 gigahertz. So it's quite a feat. That is for sure. It's quite a feat. I mentioned it already because, you know, they, they did enable such feature that has more of a headroom that gives 115 degrees Celsius for throttling. Uh, previously, it was 107. So now they're just broken. Who did that? Well, basically, uh, Skater Venture, they did that. And yeah, they did achieve this. As you can tell already, look at this. Intel Core i9 4900K after re reached it. And the max CDP, of course, is 125, which has been proven already because they got hands on to it. And there it is. Core speed is 9 point or 9043.9 megahertz, basically 9 gigahertz. So that is a massive feat, honestly. But of course, this is liquid nitrogen, so it's, it's just a world record, of course. But still, it's it's a huge, huge feat. This this processor can go crazy, that's for sure. Even though in general performance, it's not looking that good because the gain is literally non-existent. It seems like it. Yeah, but I feel like maybe. Intel was thinking they might be going for the, you know, the overclocking, maybe not the liquid nitrogen-like overclocking. Well, they did win the world record, that's for sure. But for general purposes, will it perform, like in terms of overclocking, will it perform good? I'm hoping because it can overclock pretty well. Yeah, that's for sure. So for overclockers, this is a dream come true and they did achieve it. So congratulations. Hopefully the other SKUs won't disappoint. Hopefully.